What's going on guys and welcome back to another review. Today I want to talk about microphones and the best type of microphone for shooting videos. Now in my personal experience getting the best quality microphone isn't about spending the most amount of money. You really just need to figure out what type of video you're shooting, how far you're going to be from the camera and weigh out your budget against quality. In most cases, you will get away with using a lav microphone, a lavalier microphone. They are great microphones because they allow you to attach it to yourself and it will have a certain amount of length that will allow you to still record a video but get really clear sound because the microphone is attached to you and it will pick up sound on top of the microphone. But when it comes to shooting a video like I am right now and you are about one meter away from the camera, usually a shotgun microphone is going to do the job. These are the different types of microphones here that I have used through my videos. In the end, I settled for four specific types of microphones. I use two different microphones for the mirrorless cameras but then I also use two other microphones for the GoPro. For the GoPro, when you shoot with a GoPro you are practically in close proximity. You're really only going to be about an arm's length away. I ended up going with the Boya BY-MM3, the Boya BY-MM1 and also the Saramonic SRXM1. These three microphones will definitely give you great sounding quality especially if you are only shooting about an arm's length away. Don't get me wrong you still can use it if you are shooting a meter away like I am right now but it isn't going to give you as good sound. In that case I would recommend something more like the Aperture and being a super cardioid it picks up from a very decent range. So I want to go through each one of these very quickly just to give you guys an idea of the type of audio output that you can get and I'm going to quickly add each microphone to the GoPro and do a quick shoot. First off I'm using the DD VMic D3. This is a superb microphone. It uses a single AAA battery with its features. The battery lasts a very long time. The output port is a smart 3.5 millimeter TRRS but even though it is a TRRS it works for a lot of TRS inputs as well. If you know anything about auxiliary cables and TRS and TRS, if your camera takes a TRS cable, it only uses the two pin cable. But in this case, because it's a smart TRS, even though your audio output uses a TRS with two pin, you can still use the three pin TRS cable and it will still be compatible with your camera. Another good thing about this is that it has an aluminum metal housing. So it's a very sturdy, well-built, microphone. It also has the typical quarter inch screw thread and it also has a, a mechanism which you can slide back and forth in order to bring the microphone a little bit closer or a little bit further. It is on the uh, pricier side but nothing compared to something like a Rode Video Mic Pro or Pro Plus. Do you really need a microphone that expensive in order to make a good sounding quality video? No, honestly, you do not. This DD V Mic D3 is an outstanding microphone, and the reason why I chose it in the end is because it is basically a cheaper version of the Rode Video Mic Pro, and it also has the smart auxiliary port where it stays in standby mode until you decide to turn on your camera. It will not turn on until you physically hold the power button or once you turn on the camera and that is a great feature i cannot tell you how many times where i have shot a video only to find out that i forgot to turn on the camera that's why i really wanted a microphone that had the auto on and off feature it really does help with preserving battery and also making sure that you always get audio once you turn on your camera so you know if you have a little bit more to spend i strongly do recommend to get the dd V Mic D3. It is, in my opinion, one of the best shotgun microphones out there at a very affordable price. I got mine for about $120. I'm going to leave links in the description of everything that I use in this video. I'm also not sponsored by anyone in any way. This is just simply a video showing you guys the microphones that I have used throughout my videos. If you think that um, the sound quality that comes out of my videos is somewhat respectable, 
then using the microphones that I use are definitely a good way to start. I am not a professional filmmaker. I have gone with high-end microphones, but I've also settled for the low-end microphones. There really wasn't much difference in sound quality, not enough for me to spend the bigger bucks. Let's start getting into the demos and I'll start off with the three microphones here. This is a, a phone slash camera microphone. You can mount to the cold shoe that it comes with or you can simply take it off and then push it directly into your mobile phone and it will allow you to record directly from your mobile phone without having to use the cold shoe mount and then it simply clips back on in here and you can plug your audio cable into the back and uh, use it as a normal shotgun microphone this is a microphone that was about i believe ten dollars so very cheap the gopro is about an arm's length away and this is what it sounds like without a microphone plugged in at all just the built-in microphone testing testing one two testing testing this is what it sounds like with the cheap cm06 microphone Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. I discovered later on that the sound quality also depends on the build quality as well. Next, I have the Andoa CM520, another shotgun microphone that came with a video camera setup. This is a great shotgun microphone. It has a built-in lithium battery, so you can charge it with a micro USB cable. Once it's charged, you can use its uh, gain levels. You have off, zero, and then you have t plus 10 decibels. And this is about $50, so you know, a fairly decent shotgun microphone. It comes with this wind muff. It also has a cold shoe mount here so that you can add another accessory like a LED light. It has your typical TRS auxiliary cable, so you plug it straight into your phone, camera, whatever you're using, as long as it's compatible to a TRS. This is what it sounds like with the and a CM520 microphone on zero decibels. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. And this is the Andoa with 10 decibels. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. The next microphones that I bought was the Boya BYMM1 shotgun microphone. The Boya microphone is similar to this cheap one here, but it is a much better microphone in that it is uh, built a lot better. It is made of full metal and um, it has a nice uh, shockproof mount here and it also comes with a nice wind mount and it comes with two types of cables this microphone sets you back at about thirty dollars but it is definitely something um, worth getting if you are just starting out and you are shooting in close proximity it is a shotgun cardioid pattern mic it doesn't require any batteries which is one of the great features you can simply plug and play it uses the typical 3.5 mil jack and it is compatible with all phones and video cameras it also has the uh, wind reduction and it, it picks up your voice nice and clear. It also has the quarter inch screw thread underneath the cold shoe mount. So you're able to mount it either to a quarter inch screw thread or you can just use cold shoe mount and mount it like that. It is a very good microphone to use for self logging. I couldn't recommend it more because it's very affordable and um, it does give great sound quality. This is what it sounds like with the Boya BYMM1 mic. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. Next, I went with the uh, Boya BY-MM3. This is the updated version of the Boya BY-MM1. The main difference is that it has a left and a right channel. It isn't a super cardioid microphone. It is a omnidirectional microphone, meaning that it picks up around the microphone. I wanted to get a microphone that allowed me to record both sides without having to switch it around all the time. It has your typical features like sound reducing, it has its sensitivity. It also comes with two plugs as well, TRS and TRRS. Very portable and easy to travel with. The other bonus with this is the same as the Boya. It doesn't require any batteries at all and um, it's a direct plug and play. So you know for a fact that you're able to use this and not have to worry about the batteries. It also comes with this wind muff as well as ones like this that sit on top of both sides. It sets you back at about $30. A very good microphone for uh, close proximity shooting. That way you're still able to pick up your voice clearly regardless of whether you're in front of the camera or behind it. This is what it sounds like with the Boya BYMM3. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. So next we have the Saramonic SRXM1. This is a unidirectional microphone, meaning that it only picks up sound 
from a certain point which is directly in front of the microphone it only picks up 50 percent sound when it's on the side of the microphone if you have it faced the other way it's only going to pick up 50 percent of your voice if you plan to vlog with or if you plan to speak behind the camera you can just point it towards you and it will still pick up your sound very clearly although this is a very small microphone it is most definitely powerful for its size very affordable as well only about 30 dollars shipped and uh definitely a microphone to consider if you are shooting in close proximity this is what it sounds like with the saramonic sr xm1 testing testing one two testing testing and now my next microphone is the Aperture V-Mic D1 condenser shotgun microphone. Something that I got later on. It is definitely my second go-to shotgun microphone for the simple fact that it gives great sound quality. This is a microphone that only costed me about $30-35 I believe. It is a great microphone. It is your typical super cardioid microphone with the typical wind muff and it picks up sound directly in front of it it also has a great shock bracket which allows it to move freely without causing too much background noise and it has a very thin cable that goes straight to a TRS cable when I was researching this microphone there was a video demo on this microphone and it was compared to the Rode VideoMic Pro in about the $150 ranges to about $200. From that video alone, it gave much clearer sound quality than the Rode microphone. So for something that was a quarter of the price, for it to give sound quality that is better, clearer, it had me sold. And then when I took a closer look at it, I was taken by the fact that you were able to easily switch from on to low pass filter. So here you have on and then you also have low pass filter. It allows you to cut off all that unwanted noise. For something that was only about $30, I couldn't pass it up and I had to give it a go. And I have to say that I'm very impressed with the Aperture microphone. It is definitely my second go-to microphone compared to the DD VMic D3. You can easily adjust this microphone up and down as well as facing it in a 360 motion it gives me that advantage of still being able to give clear sound while shooting behind the camera this is what it sounds like with the aperture v mic d1 testing testing one two testing testing this is what it sounds like with the aperture with low pass filter turned on testing testing one two testing testing if you want to know more in-depth information about these microphones read the specs on them and um, get a little bit more information out of them before you make your choice if you want to get really good sound quality then getting a microphone is really going to help improve your sound quality for your videos there's nothing worse than shooting a video and not having really good sound improving your sound quality will do a lot for your videos that's why i believe it's very important that you do consider investing in a decent microphone that way when you shoot your videos you have clear crisp sound quality and also decent video picture as well with these two things your video will most likely get the attention that you want it to get. It's definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs>